There was a Norwegian uh, TV program that wanted me, wanted to uh, film a gig of mine, and they suggested it in a very strange location, which was they said there was there might be a possibility of filming it at the bottom of a gas rig, and it sounded so so like crazy and completely ridiculous. But I, I wanted to kind of look into it because it, it did sound like it was right up my street as far as unusualness of it goes. The platform manager of the gas rig was, I think, the one that um, wanted someone to perform down there because he was a musician. And apparently when he had first gone down in the shaft, he had heard the acoustics in the room and the acoustics were probably one of the most incredible acoustics I've ever played in. It was his sort of idea, and then he teamed up with the TV programme, and, and that's when they approached me. So when I landed, I got to meet him, and, you know, I got told the story, and that was pretty incredible too. One of the first things I wanted to check, of course, was that the gas company itself was as environmentally friendly as possible. And luckily it was. It was, um, I think it had won the Environmental Award three years in a row, which was really important. And yes, yeah, so when we actually came to doing it, I didn't realise how much was going to go into it, all the training all the, um, you know, the sort of the medical checkups that I had to do and the ban had to do, and it turned into this whole thing. It looks very scary, it's not. And we had Tim Harris on bass, uh, Henry Spinetti on drums, and Jim Watson on the piano, and I think all of them were a bit surprised, uh, but they, they were all so amazing about it all, none of them complained. We had to practice uh, escaping from a submerged helicopter so um, that was done in a, in a pool and we were lowered in this kind of fake helicopter into the pool and then it, would, it was turned around and we had to get ourselves out upside down uh, under, under the water. And it was pretty good. I mean, all the guys, they were, they were really good at it. And we had to wear these horrendous, huge orange lifeguard suits that basically made you look like you were Kenny from South Park. Oh, oh, that's a bit weird, isn't it? Yeah. It was, I mean, it was a bit difficult, but we had about five goes, and by the end of it, we could all do it. We did get quite scared, because we had to practice this lifeboat launch, which was 30 metres above the sea. And when I say lifeboat, it was actually something that looked like a submarine, a metallic submarine. To me, I kind of looked at it as another roller coaster, but the inside of it was very metallic and very steel-like, and I did feel a little bit like Ripley out of Aliens, because it was all so kind of modern, and but also steely and very cold in a sense. And you were crammed in like, you know, completely sitting on this tiny, tiny seat in your huge, fat orange suit. As soon as you see a red light, we start pumping out the boat. You know, if anyone's claustrophobic, I definitely wouldn't recommend it. And it basically got dropped 30 metres from the sea, and it was so incredible. Um, it lasted for about 10 seconds, but it seemed to like last forever, because you got to experience zero gravity, which is pretty amazing. <laughs> the helicopter ride was incredible, and it was, it was brilliant, because you're sort of going along, and there's just sea all around, you can't see anything. I mean, I think it was something like a half an hour ride from the coast of Norway. So you can't really see anything apart from the sea just below it, and then suddenly you see this like small little island that is the gas rig. You know, you sort of don't really know what to expect, and I didn't really know what the actual leg was going to be like, and I didn't know whether, you know, singing that far down, you know, whether there was going to be pressure in terms of air pressure or difficulty of breathing or singing and how that would affect the acoustics and, and your own performance. So all of that was kind of going through my head as I landed on the, uh, on the gas rig and I could see the band were looking a bit worried. <laughs> what was amazing about the actual platform was that it's an island where people work and live for like weeks um, at a time and they kind of had everything really. I mean they weren't you know, the workers, they had their own cabins, um, they had like a little gym and they had a lovely cafeteria where we ate lots. It was strange because everything in on the platform was very high tech and very sort of modern and you felt very safe. But the lift was literally this old li rickety 
uh, metallic box that was quite small and every time because it took so long about 10 of us would pile into it so that we'd we'd get down and uh, it did this slightly scary thing which was every time it started to move it would jump a little bit and I remember the first time I did it like literally everyone screamed because we all thought we were gonna fall Whoa. and then when we got to the bottom it was this huge cylinder of wow. a room that just really looked like any other room but until you looked up and couldn't see the ceiling because it went on for you know miles and miles it was amazing look at this really it was a pretty safe environment because people work down there all the time uh, but there was definitely precautions that you had to take and you know if you didn't follow those precautions then the environment could have been pretty dangerous very a platform worker had to um, stay close to any camera that was there that was being used because something like the flash could have ignited if there was a leak anywhere a flash could have ignited kiss by kiss, we'll leave my mind one at a time one at a time the platform manager obviously got his dream of seeing um, an artist there and I did talk to him about whether he was going to make it a regular thing and have bands there like every month having doing gigs um, but he, he said he wasn't sure because it was it was so much, you know, work to organise everything. It was really amazing when I, you know, as I was leaving, because I, I kind of saw it all from, you know, as I was leaving from behind and, and looking at it. It was also interesting because I did wonder whether it would be there, say, in 100 years' time, you know, whether the gas reserves would run out, uh, you know, because of the use of energy that we have in, in the modern world. But uh, so because of that, I kind of felt, I felt good at, at having visited it and having experienced something that really no one else has. The most magical moment of it was when I started singing. The acoustics were incredible. It was so unusual. Um, and it was just a very interesting, interesting gig to do. I think it'd be amazing if someone recorded an album there. It could sound pretty, pretty cool.